Welcome back to another episode in Software Engineering and Salesforce. Uh, my name is Brooks Johnson, and I feel like I should start this one by apologizing. I know it's been a long time since I've made a video, maybe the better part of a year. I've been busy with school, and I'll be honest, this, this can be, for me anyway, an easy thing to get burned out on. Uh, but I felt like making some new videos, I kind of, I felt like I wasn't as much of a part of the larger community, right, as, as I used to be, and I missed that. So hopefully I could find some time and maybe make a little bit of sh some shorter content. And we're also going to try for this next series to go uh, really a completely different way than what has historically been the content of this channel. And we'll see what you think. So we're going to spend some time focusing on really some front end stuff. And I'm going to talk about the front end of the front end. Uh, CSS, responsive web design, layouts, things like that. Things that I always felt like were kind of a gap in my ability. And I think often to me I, is my experience a, a gap with a lot of the developers skill gap in this industry. So take a second, if you can, hit that like and subscribe button, and we will hop in. Here is uh, my CodePen. If you are not familiar with CodePen, I would say also just, right, it's CodePen.io. can be a very useful place to prototype, practice some CSS skills, a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, right now, I've got the JavaScript turned off because we're not going to use any today. And I've got a very, very simple layout. Um, two divs that are labeled as containers. All right? And they each have five divs in them, five children. One is for, we're going to call Flexbox, and one is SLDS Grid. So what I want to call it is SLDS Grid is just a design is part of the design system and it makes use of the Flexbox CSS module. And I feel like if you see us can be a great tool, but if you're not, if you don't really understand how Flexbox works, it can be a little weird. And I feel like for me anyway, and I feel like a lot of like when I'm doing front end stuff, almost never in my career have I had the chance to just do something like for an internal user, right? Like just, and it can just look like Salesforce. Everything that I ever work on is always a community, you know, an experience cloud project. Uh, you know, I'm getting Figma layouts from the UX team, and it has to be pixel perfect. It has to be responsive. It has to have a mobile layout, a tablet layout. And I feel like a lot of times these this skill set can be very lacking uh, with a lot of the developers in our industry, and it certainly can be for me. Uh, I think People are pretty solid with Apex and pretty solid with JavaScript. And sometimes I call that like, or I read somewhere like the back of the front end. But when we really get to the front of the front end and we have to write CSS and we've got to start to build our layouts, people panic. So I thought it might be worth some time to make some videos really kind of covering these responsive fundamentals. And this seemed to me like the natural place to start because I think most people when they are building their layout are going to reach either for Flexbox or SLDS Grid. Maybe later on we'll do some other videos where we talk about CSS Grid, which I think can be even more popular. But for right now, we'll, we'll work on this because it is the design system that Salesforce gives us. And I think what a lot of people are comfortable with. So again, I think the first thing you have to understand if you're working with this is that SLDS Grid is nothing more than a design system that makes use of Flexbox. So this is the, the just the natural state. There's almost no CSS applied, right? I've just put some colors on these divs, put a little bit of padding, almost no CSS. If we go to this full page layout, and I just open and close it. What I want you to do see there is that it's totally responsive. Um, this is something kind of like I stole as the idea or, you know, learned from watching some of Kevin Powell's videos is the browser left to its own devices is responsive. That's the natural state. It's usually us. It's, it's us that break that responsive quality generally by adding CSS. And we'll get into how can we avoid that. But if I don't do anything, we're right. I have a totally responsive layout. Um, and this is a lot of why we talk about maybe sometimes doing mobile first, right? This is the closest to our mobile layout, maybe just a stack. Usually mobile has the least number of CSS properties that we have to attach to it. And as we add things to it, we can start to cause problems for ourselves. But that's not really our focus today is, is mobile first or anything. It's just, I'm going to call it the hello world of Flexbox and SLDS script. So 
here's our work with nothing applied. So what I have here is I have this, this class called row, right? You see down here row and it has a property on it of display flex. And if I go up here to my top one and I just give it the class of row, not that, didn't want to do that. Uh, and when I hit save, right? I can see now I turn that into, so once I gave it that class of display flex, right? I turn this into what is called a flex container. And these items, these direct descendants now became the flex items. So this works exactly the same way. If I go to SLDS grid, all right, the exact same thing happened. So first, I just want to, to drive that home. If I go to my dev tools, and I'm going to close this out. I don't need that there. My mouse sometimes gets a little slow with Camtasia running. And I'm going to inspect an element. All right, if I go to SLDS Grid, all right, I can see that's exactly what happened. It just put that's what SLDS grid is, right? It's it's the exact same thing as my row class. It put the property of display flex on here. I want to take a quick second, say if you are this can be if you're not used to this, this can be a very powerful way to an easy way to work with your CSS, right? If I I can just turn that off, see what it looks like without it. I can change my margins, right? So a lot of times if I am trying to work with CSS, right, I can just go in here and you know, make that margin as big as small as I want until I refresh the browser. Be a very fast, easy way to prototype, check CSS before you actually put it in and deploy, deploy it up to your experience cloud. Uh, but we're going to bounce back and forth a little bit to see, like, once I once we apply those SLDS pro classes, exactly what happens if we then go look at it in DevTools. But back to CodePen. So now what happened, and this maybe isn't something you expect. So once we created that flex container, all five items got really small. And this is, this is the default behavior of Flexbox. It's going to make everything as small as it can. So you might have expected, right? So I've got, because I put a border around the container, right? So the flex container has got all of this space but its children got compressed down to as small as they can possibly be. So when we're using SLDS, and in a future video, we'll get deep into the uh, SLDS call property. That's probably what we'll do next week. Um, but and that's designed to make, I'm going to say to give you maybe more of what you expect, that everything's going to fill the available space evenly. Uh, but right now, right, I would just want to understand this is the default behavior. If we don't do anything else, Flexbox is going to put on that flex container, it's going to put all the children on one row and it's going to make them as small as they can possibly be. So if I go down, so everything on here has, has a class of item on them. If I go down to my items, let's just say I, I'm going to give them all a width of 33% of the view width. Oh, because that, that 33% of the view width, that should just be 33 VW. All right. But again, this isn't what you expected, right? Uh, everything got bigger. It filled up the whole container. But these are clearly not each getting one third of the space, right? I have five items. So they're really each getting about 20%. And again, this is the default behavior of Flexbox. It's going to keep everything on that row unless we change it. And it's going to give make everything as small as it can be to fit on that row. So first it compressed everything way down. We went over and we increased the size of all of our divs, right? With that item property, we gave them all a width of 33% of, of, the, of the view width. But they all stayed on that one row, not necessarily what you'd expect. So if we want things to wrap, right? We can either go to our, I'm going to go up to my row property. I'm going to do it without that. And this is just the flex wrap wrap. And that's exactly maybe what now you can see everything is actually getting 33% of the available space. When it ran out of space on that row, it wrapped it around and put it on a, the next row. And this is no different than if I go down here to my SLDS grid, all right? 
And if I give it a property of SLDS, wrap. Same thing, I encourage you to take a look at this later, go into DevTools, and if you look at S what SLDS wrap does, all it is doing is it's applying this property of flex wrap wrap to it. So default behavior, small as it can be, no matter how, I mean, what, whatever the width is, it's going to try to keep it all on one row. If we want some sort of a wrapping, right? In this case, I made everything 33%, but I clearly was not getting 33% because Flexbox was squeezing everything into all of the Flex container, was compressing all of the Flex items onto one row by giving it that wrap property and said, hey, if we exceed the available space of that, go ahead and wrap and start a new row. The last thing I want to talk about here, and I'm going to turn off for right now, the uh, I'm going to turn off the wrap property. I'm going to delete that out of there. And I'll leave it on SLDS grid. So something that can throw you off, again, I talked about is when we, do, when we make that flex container, we declare to display flex, it applies to all the direct children. And if you're not thinking about your markup, right? So if I, you get that, the layout from the designer, if you're not thinking about how you write your markup, how you write your HTML, this can also sometimes have, uh, it can throw you off, right? So if I'm going to, let's just say, maybe I wanted, you know, there was some text in here. I'm just going to say, I'm going to just give it an H2. Hello. Flexbox. And I'm going to give a P tag. Lorem, Ipsum, do stuff. All right, so this is probably not what you expected, right? Because remember, it took each one of these and it squeezed them in. It gave on our on our flex container, right? It made each of these its own column. Each one of these is now a flex item. Uh, and a lot of times, right, so because remember, it's going to apply to every direct child. So if we have things, hey, I want it to be part, uh, I want it to be a flex item, but I don't necessarily want all of the content to be flex children, right? The way we do this, so uh, this is what I'm saying, so just think ahead when you're writing your markup. I'm just going to give it a div. And we'll grab those. So I am, I've gotten very used to using a, uh, a Mac and I've switched over to make this video on my PC and I'm hitting the wrong key. So I apologize for that occasionally. Um, all right, now, well, you know, we'll give it a class of item. So it gets uh, class. So it gets some space like everybody else. Okay, so now you could see so by taking, we wanted to take these items kind of out of the, we didn't want our H2 and we didn't want our P to be flex items. So what we have to do, wrap them in a div, wrap them in a section tag, whatever the markup is you're using. So I just want you to, so, so flex container, the flex applies to all of the direct children. This can have sometimes some unintended consequences if you don't think about what your markup should look like. Um, and remember the default behavior is to make everything as small as it can and put it all on one row. So even if we had a width of 50%, right, uh, it's going to put everything on one row until we give it some wrapping properties. So that's it for today. What I want you to just take from this is whether we're working with SLDS Grid or Flexbox, when we declare SLDS Grid, we're putting a property of Display Flex. Display Flex then gives us what is called a flex container. All the direct descendants of the flex container are the flex items and the default behavior of flexbox if we don't do anything else to it is to put things on a row and to make things as small as they can possibly be on that row even if we increase the width it will still try to keep everything on that row unless we go ahead and we give it a property of wrap which could either be as we saw flex wrap wrap or slds wrap whichever one you prefer to use. So that's it. Hopefully this is a helpful, useful 15 minutes or so introduction to, uh, 
to layouts, to Flexbox, to SLDS Grid. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, take a second, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video where I think we'll get into uh, the SLDS call property and what that is all about. Then I think after that, we'll get into how we can center things horizontally, vertically, all of that. See everybody in the next one. Take care.